Persona 5 and its enhanced Royal re-release have been lauded as one of the greatest JRPGs of all time. Its compelling story, addictive gameplay, and flashy presentation stole the hearts of millions around the world. Admittedly, I never actually played the Royal version, only the original 2017 release. Having finally dove in for the first time now on Nintendo Switch, it's easy to see why Persona 5 Royal is one of the greatest games ever made. For the uninitiated, Persona 5 Royal puts you in the shoes of a Japanese high school student who's been shipped off to live in Tokyo after a scuffle with the law. You need to be on your best behavior or you'll be expelled. This is harder than you might think when you and fellow classmate Ryuji Sakamoto stumble upon the metaverse. This is an alternate reality where distorted desires become manifested in strange ways. For example, an overzealous volleyball teacher thinks of himself as a king of a castle. These distorted desires are dangerous in the real world and you'll need to change these people's hearts in order to better society overall. As the game goes on, you'll add more people to your cause, eventually calling yourselves the Phantom Thieves. It sounds like a heady concept, but works surprisingly well in the context of the world. These distorted desires are showcased in complicated ways, often involving an eventual party member. Because of this, it's easy to get attached to the cast of characters as you commiserate with their heartaches. Aiding this is the game's confidant system. When you have free time after school, you're free to spend time with designated characters, whether that be characters around the world or your fellow classmates. Here you'll get to know them in deeper ways and earn gameplay enhancements that I'll touch on a little bit later. All this makes for a story that you never want to end, even though the game clocks in at a staggering 100 plus hours. The Royal Edition adds a few new characters. First is a new guidance counselor, Mr. Maruki. Spending time with him increases your max SP and you'll also gain some useful items. There's also Kasumi Yoshizawa. She's presented as a new party member, and while that is true to some extent, it was not as much as I had hoped, or as other people would have hoped. I won't spoil much more here, but to say the least, she's a great addition and a really great character. I have to say, I absolutely love the story in Persona 5 Royal. Admittedly, I'm a bit biased as Persona 4 Golden is my favorite game of all time and my favorite cast of characters, but Persona 5 is undeniably strong. Having not visited this world for over five years, I loved getting to know all these characters all over again, as well as the new ones. It's easily one of the best cast of characters in gaming. Also, for those wondering, you don't have to have played any other Persona game. Despite this being the fifth game in the series and a few Easter eggs for other Persona games, you can come in here completely fresh. And if you've never played the original 2017 release of Persona 5, you don't need to play that at all. This is essentially the same exact story, just with a few more additions, so you could jump in here, no problem. When you're not crawling through dungeons and fighting demons in Persona 5 Royal, you'll be living the life of a Japanese high school student and all that it entails. First, let's start with the dungeons and combat. Each chapter of the story typically centers around one themed dungeon, called palaces here, with the goal of finding a treasure at the end. Each palace typically has some kind of gimmick like avoiding alarms in a museum or dealing with games in a casino. This keeps each one fresh and never quite feeling the same, unlike the dungeons of Persona 5's predecessors. With your group calling themselves the Phantom Thieves, there's also a lot of stealth-like mechanics to go along with that. New to this royal version is a grappling hook. Essentially this just remixes dungeons from the base version of Persona 5, so even if you have played Persona 5 and not royal, it feels like a pretty fresh experience. As you explore the dungeons, you'll also be able to take cover and get the jump on enemies. Combat itself is turn-based, where you'll have a party of up to four characters. The main objective in combat is to find the enemy's weaknesses so you can gain another turn and get a follow-up attack. If you do find the enemy weakness, you could just keep hitting that over and over, but you could also initiate a baton pass. Here you'll pass the turn to another character that will increase their damage, healing, and other status effects. Once you've hit all of the enemy weaknesses, you can initiate an all-out attack to do big damage, typically ending the fight. With the help of another confidant, you'll eventually even be able to swap out characters mid-battle. Once you meet the shogi player, Hifumi Togo, I highly recommend increasing her confidant rank as soon as possible because this skill becomes super helpful as the game goes on. For attacks, you have basically three options. You can initiate a melee attack, shoot your enemy with guns, which now refill every battle instead of after every time you leave the dungeon, as well as abilities from your personas. Overall, the combat is just very fast-paced, fun, and flashy. Sometimes turn-based JRPGs can feel kind of slow and plodding, but with the way Persona 5 uses its weakness system and how fast all the animations are, it never feels boring. Now, if you do want to speed things up or are just trying to get through trash enemies, you can initiate Rush, which speeds things up and your character will just kind of hit with melee attacks until the battle's over. There's also great bosses with challenging mechanics to keep you on your toes, so you have to really think instead of just spamming your most powerful attacks. In between palaces, you have a ever-evolving dungeon called Mementos. Visually speaking, it's pretty drab, but really what it's meant 
for is to grind experience points and do side quests. Here in Royal, there's actually a new character named Jose that can enhance mementos, giving him increased XP, money, and items. There's also flowers scattered throughout mementos that you can exchange to him for better items that you can't get anywhere else. Now, the other half of the game when you're not getting into combat, maybe my favorite part is the life sim aspect. As a student, you'll go to school and do everything that entails, like answering questions in class and studying. However, after class is over, you can partake in a bevy of side activities like going to the batting cages, playing darts with your friends, going to the gym, and much, much more. Not only do you get to know your friends better from a story perspective, but the more you hang out with them, the greater the gameplay enhancements become. For example, you can get follow-up attacks, they'll pick you up if you get knocked down, and you'll even unlock new personas for them. Persona 5 Royal just has so many activities that it's a constant and dopamine rush. No matter what you're doing, there's something to improve, whether it be a, a stat for yourself, increasing a confidant rank with a personal character, or just grinding out mementos. There's always something to do and it always feels fun. And I have to admit, I got addicted to the Persona loop all over again. I actually spent one entire Sunday just playing Persona 5 Royal from the moment I woke up, from the moment I went to sleep, and I did not regret it one bit. I almost forgot how special this gameplay is, and I wanted to savor it as much as I can, or as the game constantly reminds you, to take your time. For me, this gameplay loop is almost unrivaled. It has great combat, great characters, and fun minigame side activities to keep you engaged. To say the least, those 100 plus hours just fly by. In terms of presentation, Persona 5 Royal stands in a category all its own. Every corner of the game oozes style. Whether it be the character models, the character portraits, or the over-the-top menus, you can't help but be impressed. I feel like countless games have been trying to catch Persona 5's presentational flair for the last five years, with the only game getting anywhere close in my opinion was Atlas's own Soul Hackers 2. But that's kind of cheating if you ask me. Now just to put this into perspective, before Persona 5, had you ever seen anyone cosplay a menu? I didn't think so. I will say, coming back to this world since the original 2017 release, sometimes the visual style can be just a little too much. In dungeons, there's tiny visual flares in every corner of the screen that felt slightly distracting, not to mention the little splash animations near your feet when you run around. These aren't a huge deal, and honestly, I'm kind of just nitpicking at this point, but it felt much more noticeable now than the original version. The music is also, of course, incredible. It has that signature acid jazz that Persona is known for. Whether it's the unusual battle theme, Last Surprise, or other tunes like Beneath the Mask that set a more calming and somber tone when you explore the city, there's always a great variety of tunes to experience here. And if you ask me, this was one of the greatest video game soundtracks of all time. Now I played this on the Nintendo Switch, and you might be wondering, how does it run? Well, honestly, surprisingly well. It ran at a solid 1080p 30 frames per second. Obviously don't expect 60 frames per second here. This version is kind of comparable to somewhere in between the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 version. Something that was kind of surprising was there was almost non-existent load times, and there were load times, but to me, they were so short that I barely noticed them. It also runs and looks great in handheld mode. So unless you really want 60 frames per second, I would honestly say the Switch version might be the way to go for the portability alone. Unless of course you have a Steam Deck and that runs it at 60 frames per second, which I'm sure it can. I never got around to reviewing Persona 5 or Persona 5 Royal, but I'm glad I could now with these new ports. It's hands down one of the best games ever made and deserves to be played on as many platforms as possible. Whether you were waiting for the PC version for mods, the portability on Switch, or you simply only play on Xbox, now is the time to get your hands on this masterpiece. It's absolutely worth every single penny. Now, if you can believe it, Persona 5 has actually gotten a sequel in the year since its release. And if you're curious to hear about that, make sure you check out my review for it right here. And if you love JRPGs and want to stay up to date with the latest news, reviews, and other fun videos, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.